Congrats on the dropping, I guess, as the kids say, of your new yep. podcast uh, on the Action Park Network. Uh, Kevin Connolly of uh, Entourage fame starting yeah. his own podcast network. Uh, he's, he's not starting. He's, he's up and running. And uh, Bust is the name of the podcast about your – it's the Ryan Leaf story. And there you are, number 16 from way back in the day as a San Diego Charger. So I'll just jump in right uh, – you know, you and I have spoken about this off the air. Like, so why – why bust? Why just go out and just say bust is the name of your story, Ryan? I just think it, uh, well, I think it sells better. I just do because people associate that word with me. Um, and I also thought, and, and Kevin and I discussed this, mm -hmm. you know, he always says to me, he's like, Ryan, if you're a bust, what the hell is everybody else? You know, what's the worst word for, for bust in that scenario? And I just said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. I'm going to take the power away from that word. I don't want to let it affect me in a negative way anymore. I used to. I mean, it, it used to bother me a ton, and I just I, I just don't. And if anybody ever has a chance to, to say anything again, I always go, well, let's name on my podcast. Yeah, so I understand it. There you it. go. Yeah. Okay, so that's now a new answer for you. Yeah. Okay, very good. So uh, how many episodes? What are we going to – what are we learning? What are you – have you – have you? all right, I, I won't pepper you with questions, but how, how many episodes in this pod right now? I think we're going to be at 10. Okay. Possibly twelve. Uh, so you haven't you haven't recorded them all. We've recorded pretty much. I mean, we're, we've done nine of them. So okay. we're at the back end of everything. And I just was talking to him the other day about. It. I was like, I don't know if we can fit in like the redemptive part of this in one episode. Like, right? Sure. You know, I, I feel like it's gonna need a little more because ultimately, the reason I'm doing this and why we've chose to do this is that there are people out there that are continuing to struggle or feel like they are all alone in all of this and they'll hear something that they can relate to and know that there's a solution mm -hmm. because why would I keep trying to rip the band-aid off over and over and over again to do this it's about other people it could never be about me again when I'm when I'm doing something like this okay so who are the guests like what are you talking about? nobody you're just talking it is my straight testimonial. So if anybody has come and seen me speak over the years, right? Uh, it that's usually about an hour format, 50 to minutes to an hour. I bet you Kevin and I have spent 18 hours in the recording booth. So now Kevin is what? He's just he's producing you? Yeah. Like straight up producing you? Anna, my my wife to be, uh, mm -hmm. is produced it with our production company as well as as Kevin. Kevin was in the sessions with me. Um, I just flat out got in front of the microphone and started telling my story from when I was born mm -hmm. until where I'm at right now. And he, if he had some questions or if he needed something uh, reaffirmed or something like that, he, he'd pop in a question or here or there. So him and I, um, we've developed a really, really good relationship, and uh, we really feel like this can help people. And so when he jumped on board, I was like, okay, I, I'm willing to do this. I trust him. Okay. That's, that's the biggest thing. Interesting, because, you know, um I'm just wondering if you had interviewed somebody from your past who had a front row seat to what was going on with you, who would you have chosen? Who well, would you, who would you have chosen? Probably Jay Posner would probably have been one of them. And he is. He's a reporter for the San Diego Union Tribune that that I uh, went viral with, where I was yelling at him, uh, the reporter. What did he ask you that day? It probably didn't matter what he asked me. I think it was something he wrote the day before about what went on in the locker room. And then I was so humiliated and embarrassed about how I performed or how I played. The worst football game you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't used to doing that. Uh, didn't like the criticism. Uh, he reported something that was private in the locker room after that Kansas City game. Mm -hmm. And I, after our little gaggle of, of or press conference in the locker room on Monday, I asked him to stick around and and uh, and tried to be the intimidating, big, tough football player uh, and tell him how it was. Like, you were a peon, I am the star, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to do what I tell you to do or we're not going to have a relationship moving forward. And he knew that he kind of had me and baited me a little bit. And then like, there was a camera in the corner of the locker room, panned around, of course, and caught that. Uh, and it became kind of a caricature of who I, who I was. I didn't yell at any more reporters after that, but still to this day, like, you know, Ryan Leaf yells at reporters. That's just what it is. And the internet had just started and it became one of the first viral videos that existed. So like when Jim Everts talked about, they talk about the Jim Rome interview. Right. When they talk about Mimi, they talk about the the blow up with the reporter. So I, I get it. So he probably would have been a good I've interviewed him before on a San Diego uh, radio station. We've made you know, we've made our I've made my amends with him. Um I think my best best uh point was that I could have handled that better. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you could go back in time, obviously, this podcast wouldn't exist. Right. But if you could go back in time, you know, what would you have told your younger self? I would have just, you know, I, I wouldn't have changed anything. I would have treated people better. I think even even being a poor football player and everything that went down and uh, how just how you treat people. I just thought I was so much more important than everybody else, Rich, because I could play this silly game. Like that made me a better human being than than you. And uh, I had to be humbled. I had to be humbled in a way where I woke up on a prison cell floor. And I continue to be humbled still because there'll be moments where I think, okay, I've got this figured out. I'm at this place. Right. Nope, we're going to knock you back down because that's just – that's just how life is, and it's not fair. It's how you deal with it that matters, and this is how I'm dealing with it, and it's a daily, daily thing, no matter what, and and I love it. What do you mean you love it? I just love my life, and what it's become. Sure. Because of everything that has transpired, and the struggles I still go through, because I know, like, I know where my feet are every single day, and I, and I, I and I'm grounded in that. Like today is today. Tomorrow I have no idea. May I, maybe I'll get thrown back in prison tomorrow. I have no idea, but if I do today what I did yesterday, mm -hmm. most likely I'll lay my head down, feel at peace, and, and go about my business the next day too. Ryan Leaf here on the Rich Eisen Show in person. A bust is his uh, new podcast out um, of the Action Park Media um, label. That's Kevin Connolly's label, and he's producing you, and so is Anna, was producing you as well, and you're here on the show right now. So um, nature versus nurture, we hear that so much when it comes, obviously, to quarterbacks in the NFL and the situations that they're put in. And clearly there's more than just football at work as to what had happened to you and where you are today. But do you think that there were football things that if they were different, different team, different city, different scenarios, that you weren't attached to the hip to Peyton Manning being drafted in or – if you weren't thrown right in and have that sort of expectation level placed upon you, that things would have been different, do you think, at all? I'd like to think so, but then again, I know who I am, and geography doesn't change who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, I was the problem. Like, it may have been covered, my, like, my character defects may have been more masked if I had mm -hmm. Marshall Falk running the ball and Marvin Harrison to throw to, mm -hmm. but ultimately, if I would have led the league in interceptions like Peyton did, Mm -hmm. My his rookie year, I don't know how I would have handled that. I would have seen that as a, a terrible failure. And, of course, I dealt with failure so poorly. So I think ultimately, no matter where I went, mm -hmm. there I am. And that's the issue. So I always have to keep that in mind. Um, you know, they ask me the question a lot, like if I had the same kind of mindset now that I did back then, would it be different? Yeah. Well, of course it would be different because I would have thought of things much differently. My talent was second to none. That's why the moniker bust exists. You have to be extremely talented to be considered that. Like, they don't talk about a guy who was drafted in the seventh round and plays for three years and, and, and really doesn't play. Right. That's just not the same conversation that exists. So you have to be extremely talented, and then when you don't live up to those expectations, people, for whatever reason, I guess find a little joy in the fact that that, that name can be associated to it. So it's, by doing the podcast, it's simply my testimony from the beginning to the end, and we're hoping to kind of take away um, really, and redefine what the word bust means. Um, and that's where season twos and threes and fours go into come in, where right. now I've set this precedent. Like, I can take this to somebody who struggled or is continuing to struggle and say, hey, here's a platform for you to do the same thing, to tell your story, to be therapeutic in a way for you, and maybe to educate others and kind of explain what you went on. And, and now there's a platform for that. You may not like the name, and that may dissuade you from doing something like that. But right. I think there's a lot of people in many genres of sports that I'd love to talk to in years to come about those things. Guys that were supposed to live up to such high expectations didn't. How have they dealt with it? Are they in a positive and negative space right now? I think it'd be extremely interesting. What would have been the reaction after, you know, you began to struggle in that public moment and the blow up in the locker room with the reporter? You mentioned his name, Jay Posner. What would have happened if back then you had put out a statement, I need to step away from the game to work on my mental health, similar to what Calvin Ridley just did? What would the reaction have been back would have then, been crucified think? probably, right? 1998, they would have looked at me like I was nuts. Um, it was. Let's put it this way, Rich, mm -hmm. and I think I've talked to you about this. Yes. There's never been a trailblazer for any of this, right? So when I was deciding on whether or not I should continue to play, I was in Seattle. Mike Holmgren was the head coach. 
And instead of walking into his office and going, Mike, I'm, I don't know what's wrong. Uh, I can't get out of bed. I feel sad all the time. I feel lazy. Uh, I don't know what to do. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. There's been no one in my lifetime growing up in Montana with the cowboy culture and in the locker rooms. I've never seen another man actually do that. So how was I supposed to know to do something like that in that moment? Like the, the moment was too overwhelming for me as a 21-year-old trying to lead a bunch of men. Mm -hmm. I, it, it would have not been accepted. And it would have never have crossed my mind right. to even say something like that because that, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a solution that I could use. I never even thought about that. What a, what a, what a thing to stand up in front of the, the cameras that next day when I was reading off an apology my dad helped me write that I just tossed into a locker because I didn't want to read the apology and say, I'm really struggling with my mental health here. The moment has gotten too big for me. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. I want to do this well, and I need to step away and make sure I'm doing it the right way. Wow. Boom. That blows my mind right now when you say yeah, that. Because You're a great interviewer. No, well, you know, I, please. No, I, I, I love talking to you about this stuff because it is so damn important. It's so important, you know, and what you're talking about and what Glaze, Jay Glazer talks about, and I know you're – you're you're active with merging vets and players and how Thursday night I'm gonna do the the workout in Dallas at 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 and T Stadium with all the community and vets because I'm calling the TCU game this weekend so so you're gonna go do that yeah. which is where everybody can get together and you work out so you work your body and then you work your mind yep. and you work your heart all in one night where you work out together you get the sweat going and then you sit around and you talk my wife and I have been privy to these um conversations and these gatherings and so it is important and it's 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 just pretty what's the word for it other than cool that that we're seeing calvin ridley can step away right and there aren't people and if they are it's like to hell with you you know hey they could have used him this week in dallas and you're not hearing any of his teammates say any of that we had his coach arthur smith on this past week and he's like when I asked him, like, so are you going to check back in with him to see what's going on? He's like, I want to talk about that. And we're just treating it like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and just say we're putting a time frame on it. Right. You know, this doesn't have a crutch. It doesn't have a cast. It doesn't have anything like that. So I'm just wondering, like, if that outlet was, in fact, available to you in 1998, you probably wouldn't even have taken it, you think, because of the way that it was looked at at the time? Or, or yeah, I mean, I, there was no, right. there was no, like I said, a trail. There was nobody. I would have been like the first to do that in that moment, mm -hmm. and they would have been like, "Oh, what a terrible mistake we made. We drafted this guy that was completely incapable uh, of functioning." You know, and one of the biggest uh, comments about me is that I, I was so talented, but I didn't, I didn't have the the acumen. I didn't have what was between the ears. Right? Mm -hmm. There was a local kid from my high school who was an amazing quarterback. He was this guy I looked up to. He was the state champion, and he would go on to greatness at the University of Montana. And uh, they always would they always would tell me that if I had, uh, his name was Dave Dickinson. If I would have Dave Dickinson's mind, I would have been a pro, a pro football Hall of Famer. Hmm. And there may be some truth to that. He was one of the smartest people because he was completely undersized, won the Walter Payton Award, won a national championship at the University of Montana, played in the CFL, won great cups. He's now coaching up there one of my heroes growing up. So uh, there may be some truth in that. But I also think you can tell from the fact when I host your show and who I am now, like my brain works just fine. Uh, it's a matter of how I chose to use it at the time. I chose to believe and think that I was just above everybody else. So I couldn't show any weakness. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.